The building is majestic, extravagant, and mysterious, as if a spaceship has landed smack dab in the middle of Seoul. It's Dongdaemun Design Plaza, the new multi-purpose complex facility that opened last month. And Arirang TV reporter Shin Se-min went to check it out. Spent building this landmark, and some are skeptical it'll be able to live up to its steep price tag. Dongdaemun Design Plaza is Seoul's newest landmark. The unique structure is over 85,000 square meters in size. But many are criticizing the cost of the structure. It took more than 450 million U.S. dollars to build. Many are wondering if Dongdaemun Design Plaza is just a building that's pretty to look at, and we got a chance to check out various aspects of the landmark through this report. April 1st marked the 10th anniversary of Korea's first ever free trade deal with Chile. The trade volume between Korea and Chile has jumped four and a half times over the past 10 years. Economics correspondent Na Hyung Young analyzed the past 10 years of the Korea-Chile FTA and how it has benefited our economy. The nation's automobile industry was the biggest beneficiary, but the agricultural sector took some hits. We learned about the significance of Korea's first FTA and what more there is to do. It looks like reunification is no longer a problem for just the two Koreas. This week, reporters Hong Ju-sun delivered some significant news related to this issue. Last Tuesday, a financial cooperation forum was held between South Korea and the United Kingdom in London, the heart of international finance. Korea and the UK discussed ways to provide financial aid to North Korea in preparation for reunification and agreed to expand cooperation in the financial sector. The financial cooperation between Korea and the United Kingdom strengthened through the forum, and we will keep an eye out for how financial cooperation between the two countries helps our financial industry. Korea is the only divided country in the world. And that makes reports by Kim Hyun bin Arirang TV's Defense Ministry correspondent, all the more special. As a Defense Ministry correspondent, you have to know all aspects of the military, whether it's Marines or Navy, uh, all aspects, and what their plans are. And you have to know all that, and you have to put that into perspective in your article. This is one of the hospitals that was rebuilt by the Arau unit. And to whether North Korea will comply with the basic standards to deal with any type of threats from the North. Inter-Korean relations fluctuate greatly, which means Hyunbin always has to stay on top of things and be ready to report at any time. Military trucks arrive, and people in military uniforms are spotted. Soon the site becomes more chaotic with many press members gathering. And there's Hyunbin. Pohang is a five-hour drive from Seoul, so Hyunbin came down a day early to prepare for this coverage. Usually this small beach is quiet, without a soul in sight. So what's the reason for all these soldiers and press members? The helicopters flying around and unidentified boats out at sea arouse curiosity all the more. Well, this is a joint military exercise, uh, amphibious landing exercise with Korea and the U.S. And what's significant about this year's exercise is that it's the largest in two decades. Uh, more than 12,500 troops and high-tech weaponry. Um, there's about 13 Navy vessels and about 60 different types of uh, fighter jets and planes that took part in this exercise. Uh, it's for the Marines, for the both countries to uh, enhance interoperability and you know, relations between the two countries. So I thought it was going to be a good chance 
to show what Korean military has to offer. The Korea-U.S. joint amphibious landing exercise is the largest in two decades. A U.S. soldier is busy giving a briefing on one side. Uh, what's the reason it's larger this year? The training is larger this year than the previous years. Sure. What agency are you with? Uh, Arirang TV. Okay, good to go. Um, well, it's mo it's mostly opportunity. So as I was explaining before, mm -hmm. this particular week there's actually two Marine Expeditionary Units in the same place at the same time, which is doesn't happen very often. Okay. And so we're taking advantage of that to enable ha both of those MUs to come together to form a, a brigade-sized mine. Uh, operation and so it's the two U.S. MUs, Marine Expedition, mm -hmm. Expeditionary Units, and also a rock mu sized element as well. So uh, you have Korean and U.S. Uh, mu sized elements at one place at one time that allows that exercise to be that large. Because in a lot of the Korean media, they say uh, Sang Yong is part of the full eagle exercise. Hyunmin goes back and forth between the U.S. and Korean soldiers, asking detailed questions about the exercise and writing everything down. Soon, the shoreline is packed with reporters. The U.S. vertical takeoff and landing craft, also known as the Osprey, finally appears in the waters around Pohang. True to his position as a defense ministry correspondent, Hyunbin is well versed in military related knowledge. The landing exercise finally begins in full scale. Along with a deafening boom, a column of water soars towards the sky. It's a training drill. But it almost felt like the real thing. The training continues, not just on land, but also in the air. It's called a Helios. It's a fighter jet. The soldiers pay no attention to the crowd of media and hunker down quickly for infiltration. The Korean military is trying to show that they are doing their job and they're doing it right and trying to assure the people by showing this footage, by going on air, uh, people will know, you know, they're working hard and they know how they're going to protect us. You know, it's not just their uh, self-esteem. It's about the equipment, all the high-tech gear, and, and the personnel so that come with it. Uh, that helps people understand that the military could keep the citizens safe. It's not easy for the public to see such a drill, so there's a lot of competition between press members to get good coverage. The press members run in the sand to get the best shots. They can't miss the landing ship fast, also known as LSF, which carries tanks as well as soldiers. All the latest military equipment used in the exercise is captured by the cameras. Hyunbin is in a hurry as the training open to the press is slowly coming to an end. Uh, 
Approximately 12,000 soldiers from South Korea and the United States are taking part in this large-scale exercise. <laughs> There's some commotion as everyone tries to find a good spot. This kind of situation is quite common in situations like this. Lately, North Korea has been chaotic. Uh, they've been shooting off missiles, uh, launching um, was it, multiple rocket launcher shells all over the East and West Sea. So when tensions are high, uh, you know, foreign media, it grabs the foreign media's attention. And especially, uh, North Korea condemned this drill, uh, specifically the do double dragon drills, and saying it's an infiltration, it's a, it's a drill for invasion. So that, I, I believe that's why foreign media are kind of intrigued by uh, the whole situation here with the big exercise going on and the North Korea situation up north. There was a Q&A session with the American counterpart as well. This particular exercise is a preparation to invade Pyongyang. What do you say to that? This exercise is not uh, designed to invade any place. This is the most complex form of military maneuver that, that any nation can undertake. So we, we practice it, we practice it to, to, to get good at it. Uh, General, is there a particular reason you set Poang as your uh, strategic point for your exercise? Poang is, this is traditionally the area that, that, that has been designated to uh, execute amphibious operations. Like I said, I was here, uh, 1987 was the first time I came and landed at Toksakuri Beach. Um, this is traditionally where uh, the Korean Marine Corps trains and uh, it's adjacent to their, their larger camp, Camp Wuchuk. Um, the Korean 1st Division is down here, so it's just a logical place to conduct an exercise. Hyunbin was the only Korean reporter to ask the general a question. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, so maybe email will send it to you. No, no, no. Here, here, here. Oh, no, no. Kim Hyunbin, please. Ah, no, no. Kim Hyunbin, please. Send it down. No, no. Thank you. When there's an English interview like today, Hyunbin's interview and translation skills help the domestic reporters in many ways. Before the drill is over on April 7th. North Korea has condemned the uh, okay. North Korea has condemned the drills, calling them a rehearsal for an invasion. Some experts say it is highly like to one and day. North Korea has condemned the drills, calling them a rehearsal for an invasion. Some experts say, given the level of anger, it is highly likely that Pyongyang will conduct a ballistic missile launch or a fourth nuclear test before the drill is over on April 7th. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News, Poang. Our national defense correspondent Kim Hyun-bin reports from Poang. U.S. and South Korean Marines blaze across the water to secure the shoreline and their positions on Korea's southeastern coast. The Marines are here for the joint South Korea-U.S. amphibious landing exercise, dubbed Double Dragon. It is highly likely that Pyongyang will conduct a ballistic missile launch or a fourth nuclear test before the drill is over on April 7th. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News, Poang. But at the same time, South Korea and the U.S. were holding the joint amphibious landing exercise in Poang. We begin with this breaking news. North Korea has fired three artillery shells into the West Sea uh, earlier today on this Monday, and one of them has fallen. North Korea launches another provocation out of the blue. Hyunbin was out in the field, so the news center delivered the breaking news.
trading live fire across their disputed inter-Korean maritime border. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said that North Korea began its live fire drill a little past noon this Monday afternoon. A spokesperson for the Joint Chiefs of Staff said some of the shells fired by North Korea dropped in the South Korean region and that the South responded with fire. When I saw, saw the news, when I saw all the headlines from all the medias, I was thinking, wow, I should have been, I should have been there. It was the wrong time to go down. But it's, North Korea is unpredictable, so I can't be on standby 24-7 uh, just waiting for their provocation. Uh, if I have a story I have to go to and it's defense-related, I have to be there. A day later. Before he could recover from his trip to Poang, Hyunbin went straight to the Ministry of National Defense. Hello and welcome. It's Monday the 31st of March. You're tuned in to our 10 a.m. newscast here. He was to deliver live coverage of the Defense Ministry's statement concerning North Korea's provocations the day before. For the latest, we are going to connect live to our correspondent Kim Hyun-bin, who's standing by at the Ministry of National Defense in Seoul. Hyun-bin. Uh, South Korea remains on high alert uh, following Monday's exchange of hundreds of artillery rounds across the Western Sea border. Artillery rounds fired on Monday afternoon were from multiple rocket launchers, which lacked accuracy, especially compared to the precision of the K-9 self-propellant heavy artillery. I got back pretty late from Poang on Monday night, and uh, while I was coming up, I got a call from the office saying that they want me to be at the Defense Ministry to connect live the next day. Because there's, there's a briefing. Uh, which, which is held every day, but it gives you a total uh, defense ministry perspective, Korean, Korean military perspective on what happened uh, the day before. So they wanted me to do a live with the results. Um, so I went to the defense ministry and did a live connection. Since South and North Korea remain divided, a defense ministry correspondent must be on standby 24 hours a day. and Hyunbin's on the clock again today. Chopiago, 새마을운동 세계화에 관해서 인터뷰를 하자 해서 왔습니다. 새마을운동의 내용과 실천 방식을 시대에 맞게 변화시켜서 미래 지향적인 시민 의식 개혁 운동으로 발전시켜 나가기를 기대합니다. 날고 이 봉사가 초소비가 보완해낸 이 봉사 발전을 중천북도 진천군에서는 반민의 하나가 돼 농로 확장에. Mr. Lee, it's Scott Thompson. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Thank you so much for coming. We've got a lot to uh, a lot to talk about. Yes, <laughs> it's a pleasure for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be very interesting. I think we can actually take yeah. a seat here and and get uh, settled in. I was just speaking about about this movement. Mm -hmm. You know, this this uh, reintroduction. It's a uh, oh, whoa, careful. <laughs> 조금 너무 높은 것 같다. 괜찮아요? 
one quick question for you. We were confused a little bit about some numbers here. Mm -hmm. So there were six model villages around the world before the foundation was founded, right? And now there are a total of, is it 17 or is it 18? 18, okay. Most <laughs> eight. I think it's interesting in that this was a very specific movement for Korea back in the 70s, where of course, so I'm curious to find out how um, the Guest Foundation this evening is approaching that and uh, adapting the movement to fit other countries and other environments. Mr. E, thank you very much for being on the program. Uh, thank you for having me today. Now, the Sema Undong, it was first established in the 1970s as a government-led rural development campaign. It's been reintroduced now by the Park and Hay administration. Tell us why. Sema Undong was initiated in the 1970s to modernize the Korean rural community. In general, the uh, project in Korea uh, built on the park, so they will spend the operation of the Travels across the globe, Mr. Yuji Ha, thank you very much for being on the program, sharing your insights, we appreciate it. Thank you very much, also, yeah. thank you very much. And thank you for watching, we'll see you next time, after 10. 평상처럼 하는데 조금 뭐 긴장도 조금 되기도 하고 그러더라고요. 뭐 그런 대로 하고 싶은 얘기는 다 했습니다. Learned uh, a lot more about the success stories and how they're uh, spreading again what Korea has learned uh, from its history and incorporating it and uh, basically exporting it to these countries that are in need of uh, a little bit of help.